feel my calm in the chaos My peace in the war You speak light into darkness You tell me I'm yours Only you, Jesus, are in control You are my every heartbeat Every breath that I breathe You're all Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about confidence while we take a look at the story of someone who had big questions. Hey, do you know what the best kind of armor to stop a piglin attack is? Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about confidence, which is living like you believe God is with you. What are we doing today? What do you think we should do? What about raising our game? Where should we start? How about at the beginning? Why don't you take the lead? Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> okay, stop. Too many questions. Except you can never have too many questions. Which is exactly where we're going today. Right. So what should you do with a question? Depends on your question. Point taken. Okay, so we're entering s'more season. Mmm, mm. s'mores. s'mores. But you don't always have a campfire when the s'mores cravings hit. So I'm thinking maybe we could put a marshmallow in the microwave. Please form that phrase as a question, Sebastian. Um, what happens when you put a marshmallow in a microwave? Yes. Well done. You have just initiated... The scientific method. The what? The scientific method. It's a great way to figure out how things work. Step one, ask a question. Already done. What happens when you put a marshmallow in the microwave? Step two, make a hypothesis. I've always thought a hypothesis sounds like a mythical creature. Duck! <laughs> a hypothesis is a prediction you make based on what you've seen before. Well, a bonfire makes a marshmallow soft and mushy, so I think a microwave will make it melty. Kinda. Step three, conduct an experiment. Wait, is this the part where we put the marshmallow in the microwave? You bet. Yes, let's, let's do it. it. That is a serious marshmallow. Well, this is serious business. Ready? Ready. Commence experimentation. 
Whoa, it's puffing up. Yeah, it is. A lot. Wow. It's still puffing up. This is pretty wild. I wonder how big it's gonna get. Look how big it's getting. Oh, I can smell it. Step four, analyze your results. Wow, it looks like our marshmallow turned into the Hulk for a minute. It did get melty. Mmm, <laughs> that's perfect. Step five, draw conclusions. I conclude putting a marshmallow in the microwave is super fun and perfect for s'mores. So there's your answer. Asking questions is super fun. Speaking of which, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life. Then on the third day, he rose again. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus everywhere they went. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Jen. Just as the religious leaders in Jerusalem hadn't understood Jesus, they also felt threatened by his followers. Many of Jesus' friends were thrown in prison. Some were even killed. But that didn't stop the new believers. They moved out from the city into Judea and Samaria. One believer, a man named Philip, began teaching about Jesus in a city in Samaria. Big crowds gathered to listen. Sick people healed through God's Spirit, and many people became believers and were baptized. There was great joy in the city, but right in the middle of this amazing work, God sent an angel to speak to Philip. Go south to the desert road. To the desert? The road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. If I was Philip, I would have been full of questions. I mean, things were going great in Samaria. Lots of people were becoming Jesus followers. So why would God want Philip to leave it all and head for the desert? I mean, the desert. There's no one here. But Philip listened to God. He started off down the lonely road into the desert. And before long, he spotted something. As Philip drew closer, he saw an Ethiopian official seated in a chariot. God's spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot. Stay near it. Now the man in the chariot happened to be very important. In fact, he was the royal treasurer of the queen of Ethiopia. Though he was not Jewish, he believed in the one true God and had even journeyed all the way to Jerusalem to worship God there. But though the man had loved God, he was missing a big piece of the story. As the official traveled home, he puzzled over some verses in the book of Isaiah the prophet. He was led like a sheep to be killed. He did not open his mouth? <laughs> Excuse me. Stop the chariot. Uh, just uh, wanted to ask. Uh, do you uh, understand what you're reading? How can I? I need someone to explain it to me. The Ethiopian man invited Philip to join him in the chariot and explain the scripture. How amazing is that? I mean, you can see God at work in every detail of this story. Here, uh, read this again. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? I am so glad you asked. What a perfect setup. Philip was able to explain that the prophet Isaiah was talking about a savior and that this savior had come. 
Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how he lived, how he gave up his life for us, and how God raised him back to life. The Ethiopian official was mesmerized. He took every word to heart. As they traveled down the road, the man looked up and saw a pool of water shimmering in the distance. <laughs> Look, here is water. What can stop me from being baptized? Just a quick reminder, they're in the middle of a desert, which generally means no water. <laughs> and yet, miraculously, God brings them to an oasis at the perfect moment. Philip baptized the Ethiopian in the pool of water. It was a sign that the man now believed in and was choosing to follow Jesus. As the two men came up out of the water, God's spirit suddenly whisked Philip away. The Ethiopian official must have understood that God was at work because he continued on his journey back towards Ethiopia, filled with joy. The end. Wait, what happened to Philip? Great question. We have no idea how or why God's spirit moved him, but Philip next showed up in the coastal town of Azotus. He immediately began to tell everyone there the good news about Jesus. I love how when the Ethiopian man had big questions, God set up an amazing way for him to learn about Jesus. So, what's our part in the story? Well, just like the Ethiopian man, God welcomes our questions. When we're confused or uncertain about something, we don't need to hide it, whether it's a big question about God or a little question about a homework assignment. We can ask. You may be wondering, why is it so hard to do the right thing? God does let bad stuff happen. What do I do when my parents argue a lot? Will I be able to make friends at my new school? Why do I have to work harder than everyone else just to do okay on a test? You can take all of your questions straight to God or to a parent or a teacher or another trusted adult. Now, if you need help with the homework assignment, your teacher can definitely give you an answer. But you might not get your answers to your other questions, at least not right away. And that's okay, because no matter how many questions you have, or no matter how big they are, God won't get angry or annoyed with you asking. You can be confident that God will be there, right there with you, no matter what. No question about it. That's right. See you next time. So here's the thing. God is with you, even when you have questions. I have a question. Can I make two marshmallow peeps joust in the microwave? Only one way to find out. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time.